<laughs> hey folks, everybody's got 20s tonight, so if you can make the change easier for me, that'd be nice. Like give me 22 if there's $12 worth, or whatever you can do. Don't, I mean, don't feel guilty if you don't have it. But. 100's okay, right? 100's okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> the ATM, you know, it makes us all a 20 dollars. Exactly. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's still real good. What will I be? Two seniors, one elder, two students. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Mm. Two adults and one senior. Yes, sir. You gotta stick the front. Okay, I'll guide you a little. Get real close. Good, excellent. Just think of your secretary, Mr. Governor. Uh, yes. Okay, just close the latch for now. Uh, I, need to, I need to get it all the way on. <laughs> so Brooke, I'm, Brooke, fortunately, when he takes over here, he won't have to deal with any of this stuff. Nope. It'll be just all digital, all, okay? Good? Excellent. So how many years have you been running these uh, big boy Forty projectors? Years. 40 years. The middle part of the projector, here where the film passes in front of the light and behind the lenses and the sound heads have been in here since the mid 50s. Wow. And so it stops 24 times a second here in front of the lens um, and this is the intermittent sprocket that makes it do that and the reason it stops is otherwise it would just be a blur and since it stops that frequently flickers a little bit, and that's why they call it the flicks. Ah. And then other parts have been added. Originally the light source was carbon arcs, which was two arc welding rods that you struck together to strike a spark, and they would provide the light and it had an automatic feed that fed them together with big retro, uh, rectifier set at the back of the units. And th those would only go for about 20 minutes, which is a 2,000 foot reel like this. And so there would be six to eight changeovers in the movie from one projector to the other. Lots of chances for error. I had to be here all the time. Um, so I added the longer arms like this and the 6,000 foot reels, which will run for an hour. So most, almost all movies, only one changeover. And obviously you had to cut a hole in the ceiling to do I this. I had to cut a hole in the <laughs> ceiling when we added the so-called penthouse units, uh, which is a Dolby sound pickup. That was even later. Uh, the red light uh, is, is the, where the optical sound is picked up. And that's when I had to poke a hole in the ceiling. Um, so they're incredibly, uh, well-made and reliable machines. Um, what is their fate from here on forward? Hard to say. Yard sculpture. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no market for them because people are changing uh, over to digital at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not making them anymore. Um, they're being recycled, I suppose. I think I'd like to put one on my on the porch of the house we own in Langley because it's undercover. What I'd really like to do is put one out in front of the Clyde, but I'm sure the city won't let me do that. Mm, yeah. So the new layout will be a single projector in place of number one with a server below it and the um, films. We have to change our language as well as everyone else, everything else. The movies will come on hard drives that will be ingested into the server and the previews will be ingested into the th server and then with a keyboard and a monitor you make up the program and it's all automated after that. You can set it, I could start it with a, my smartphone if I had one. I could, you know, call up from home from start it, I'll probably set it to start on time. So there'll be one projector, it'll be smaller overall than this. Um, this space over here will be cleared up behind me and all of the film stuff you see in here, all the, the rewind machine, the films, uh, you know, the extra reels, the extra bulbs, all of that stuff, all of this stuff, the tape, most of the tools, the old manuals will all go away. 
Uh, that's a rewind machine there too as well you're looking at. And so over on this side, uh, my plan is to move the, this rack over just to the edge of this window probably. And then I'm going to put a little shelf in along that front wall and permanently put in my sound and light boards. So I'll be able to bring the snake inside there and disconnect it with short ones. For doing stage shows. Yeah, and, and make that port there openable mm -hmm. so that I can at least hear if the mic's on. And of course now with uh, these guys moving out, uh, the risk of fire has dropped. So The risk of fire is not a big deal anymore. That's old uh, nitrate films and I think they changed away from those, you know, long time ago in the 40s. But this uh, steel lined projection... Bit. That's from those days. Yeah. That's from the old days when they were nitrate films and as a matter of fact they made uh, a lot of booths have toilets in them because the projectionist was not supposed to leave the booth. The, all the windows had uh, uh, curtains, steel curtains that would come down with a lead shield that would melt to close that off. The door closed automatically and the projectionist just died. <laughs> but but like that, ch that changed fairly. Sure. That changed, I think, in the, in the 50s or the late 40s. Uh -huh. And then later in the 60s or 70s, they changed to Mylar film, and, and we hardly ever have film breakage anymore since then. So, when was this theater built? 1937. Mm -hmm. So there was one set of projectors in here from 37 to 50-something, I don't really know. Uh, and then these were put in here, and I've been nursing them along and, you know, changed the light source, changed the sound pickup, the real extensions. So I, I'm going to thread this one up. I don't know if you want to see that. Sure. Here we go. So I think I can do this with my eyes closed. I'm not crying at the moment. So this is the first first night that this film runs. So if there are any problems, they will reveal themselves tonight. In theory, I could uh, preview it. And of course, you still get these on the smaller reels and have to make them yes. up. Yes, yeah, they come on the 2,000 foot reels, and I make them up and then tear them down. And actually, we're, we're doing a, a format change from flat, uh, which is more or less square picture. Can you back up a little so I can <laughs> squat? Uh, to CinemaScope, which is not as tall and wider. And so I've changed over the lens and the aperture plate here on this side. I haven't done it on the other side. I need to remember to do that. Mm. And so when it first comes up, it will probably be just an eats out, eats out of focus. Mm -hmm. That mad dash to get it in focus. Yeah, I'll be ready for it. So, yeah. And it may need a little adjusting up and down or something to, mm -hmm. to uh, get it perfectly on the screen. Okay, and then once it's threaded up, we, we run it a little bit. Just, and then we, then we know that it's threaded properly. And of course, the sound is half of what tells you, right? The sound of it, yeah. yeah when it's, when it's running, I run it by ear. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know by the sound when something goes wrong. So I'm going to change this over. This is a flat lens here, what we call flat. Uh -huh. okay. um, and it changes for the CinemaScope lens. And take the lens cover off. And then there is an aperture plate. That's for flat. That's for scope. Mm -hmm. And then because we uh, for scope, we show it up higher, so we have to raise the aiming point. On the oh. new machines, this will so, all be automated. You'll really? S you'll, say, you'll say CinemaScope, and it will make all of these changes. Oh, wow. Neat. We'll still have to change the masking on stage by hand. Darn. <laughs> so now this one is changed over. I raised it. I changed the lens. I changed the aperture plate, and uh, so it's set up for scope. Good night tonight, I can tell by the crowd buzz. Yeah. I know, I know this is Black Friday is a good night.
for the movies typically. So when we make the changeover, we're going to close down for three days. That's not essential, but I would rather do it methodically and carefully, mm -hmm. or have it done actually. I won't be doing much of it myself. When I first bought the place, there was one speaker on stage, a, a bass speaker and a high range speaker, and 15 amps of amplifier. Oh my God. And now there are, on stage there's a center, a left, center is mostly dialogue, left, right are mostly music, a subwoofer for low notes. There is a one circuit, left surround, three speakers, right surround, three speakers, those are separate. And we're adding left rear surround and right rear surround. So it's easier for them to fly a helicopter around inside the room. And we're also uh, increasing the amplification, uh, the power, because uh, these m machines put out, uh, I guess, more power, is that right? Anyway, they want more amps to run, to run clearly. Mm -hmm. So it's all digital, of course, until the speakers, which are analog. Mm -hmm. I guess they always will be. <laughs> yeah. I you have to so. move that air. Yeah, it's a physical way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just uh, back to the old school stuff. Um, this was always a kick for me. I always oh, yeah. had a great adrenaline rush when I was in here doing the, the switch over. Yeah, and, the, and if you'll go up, you will see the buzzer right there. Oh, yes. Clearly yes. a homemade buzzer. Yeah. I just bet that's original equipment. It looks yeah. like a shop project. Uh-huh. It does. Yeah, look at the hand-wrapped coils. Yeah, yeah. It's very the cool. old horseshoe magnet. Failed. It's never failed. Yeah, it's just brilliant. Oh, for the changeover, uh, up here uh, there's uh, something that goes around with the reels and as it goes faster it spins as it the reel as the film on the reel gets smaller it spins faster and inside of that round box there's a little thing that hangs down with wings on it and the faster it turns because it's centrifugal force the more the wings go out and when they go out far enough they make an electrical contact which lights off the buzzer and the warning light which is right here that's a fairly basic equipment and that gives me about three minutes warning so when that happens I start the other machine I start the lamp for the other machine and I start watching in the upper right hand corner for cue marks there's two sets of cue marks hopefully sometimes they've taken the film apart incorrectly and spliced it back together and they're not there but usually they're there and on the first set of cue marks I'll start the second machine they're both running they're both running and on the second cue mark, I can, I can actually hear the splice go through on the second machine, so I know there's film there. I switch the aperture, which opens and allows the light and the sound over. And if I do it right, you can't tell. If I do it wrong, you might hear swearing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's a changeover, and it's scary until about the 4,000th time you've done it. <laughs> So but that's you, when stuff goes wrong, if it's going to. And, and of course, uh, when I was uh, working in here, uh, I had uh, j just one time something went wrong, mm -hmm. which is, and uh, it happened to you too, where the, the reel fell off. <laughs> Down below? Yeah. Well, well, I can't better. remember which one. Well, I think the bottom one. Yeah, the upper one is a disaster when yeah. it falls off. It can damage stuff. Uh -huh. um, you know, every mistake that you can make has been made, and of course you tend to panic. I call the job hours of boredom and moments of panic. <laughs> I think that describes the projectionist job. And hopefully that'll change with the new equipment. Yeah. It'll be hours of boredom, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get to watch the movies. I won't. Typically, during a movie, I'm either tearing down or making up the next movie or the previous movie, uh, getting them ready to ship. Um, so, particularly with a foreign film, it's hard for me to keep up because I can't read the subtitles. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I keep up by listening to the dialogue. So that's Projection Booth 101, 40 years cool. worth. That's cool. Yes. Popcorn popping, look at that. Okay, yeah. I put this like this, and then you check it. Yeah. Okay, starting seven minutes late. Got everybody out of the lobby, so now the lamp's running. I have the proper uh, sound format selected. I have the volume set for the previews. And I have 
the aperture and the sound on number two. I have the wake up buzzer on number one. And now we can start and I'll bring the lights down a little bit. When I hear the splice go through here, I can actually switch it. There it goes. Click. And see, not much out of focus. Pretty good. I'm not even sure I can improve on it. I had the sound off in here, so I couldn't hear it. So now that one should run unattended for most of an hour. And then we'll switch over to the other one. And I'd love an espresso. Why would my key fit into your father's machine? Do you want to have an adventure? Stop that child! I'm running!